A virtual thank you to Dean Mora for that invitation to be here today and for the introduction. And a virtual greetings to the entire Jackson School of Geo Sciences family, the professors, researchers, and staff, to the parents, spouses, and siblings, friends today, to the alumni and friends of the university, and especially greetings to those here today who are receiving recognition for a special level of achievement in their education. I am so excited to be with you here today. For those of you receiving your new degrees today, each of you has a compelling story for your path to reach this point. Learning is supposed to be tough. Hurdles along the way are to be expected. The distractions of, from the nuances of youth, which persist to all ages, must be included as valuable parts of the learning process. So cherish all that history as you rejoice in arriving at this point in the journey today. I'm sure that all of your stories are more interesting than mine, but indulge me for a moment as I share mine. I was a senior in high school in 1973. My aspirations were set high. I wanted to become a highly recognized member of society, someone unique and the best trailblazers of that era were investigative journalists. Like Bob Woodard and Carl Bernstein, reporters for the Washington Post, whose skill, perseverance, and especially their swashbuckling daring brought down the presidency of Richard Nixon. By the time of my graduation, they had written a book about their story, which soon became a movie, Robert Redford as Bob Woodard. So I enrolled in the best liberal arts college in America, Swanee, the University of the South, and pursued a degree in English in order to become a swashbuckling journalist. My father received his BS and MA in geology right here in Austin. And in 1974, his struggles as an independent geologist saw a career turn as he found himself as a partner in the discovery of Giddings Field which began the Austin chalk trend. His business increased, and he had me work summer and Christmas breaks in his office and in the field. And by my sophomore year, I had recognized another swashbuckling profession, the independent geologist, as represented by my heroes, my father and his associates, riding a tremendous boom in the Austin chalk development. I finished my degree in English at Swanee, one of the best things I've ever done and came to Austin. I took undergraduate courses for two semesters, applied and was accepted to graduate school here, went on 660, and began my graduate studies a year after arriving in Austin. Now, when I moved to Austin in the fall of 1978, a client of my father also moved his office to town, and I began working in his office, picking locations on 2D seismic and going out in the field to log wells. After a year, I changed assisting my father with all of his clients while finishing my graduate courses in the next two semesters. I also took my work product and created a master's thesis during this time. The structure and stratigraphy of the Upper Cretaceous Gulfian Series, Giddings Field area, Southeast Texas. I made my oral presentation at Tech Sessions in the spring of 1980 with about 50 attendees from the oil business sitting in. And so in less than two years in Austin, with my coursework complete, I returned to Corpus Christi to work alongside my father. So where's the swashbuckling story now, almost 40 years to the day? My father had certainly made his. But you know, for every time the swashbuckling hero swoops down on the rope to rescue the good-looking woman, that hero also finds himself at the end of a rope with a sword at his head. So is the life of a swashbuckling geologist in whatever career path or profession you may take. Let me jump to the end of the journey and then reflect back on the path. In 2008, I joined with some longtime associates of mine to drill the discovery wells for the Eagleford Shale Trend. Because of my role in that discovery, 
I was asked to present at the 2010 annual conference of the American Association of Petroleum Geologists, the APG, in a forum called Discovery Thinking. In an effort to convey those intangible values which lead to a discovery, I presented some points that day in my speech, which in hindsight I realized had been tenets in my life and in my entire career. And I hope to convey today that these points are germane to any career path in the geological sciences, not just the one I followed. The first point I'll make in the discovery is to study a specific domain of your work in infinite detail, never taking a shortcut on seeking the entire realm of knowledge in that field, knowing others, your peers and competitors, hunting the same volume of knowledge, because a discovery occurs at the edge of all the current knowledge a discovery is the bursting through the boundary into new information, and that is best attained by striving with all your might to reach the boundary of all knowledge in your favorite area. Now this talk was the first one I'd made with a large audience with a PowerPoint on the screen. Age-related deficiency in IT skills had me rely on others to prepare the slides. But I discovered for myself how to fly in an addition. And so point 1A became, while becoming an ex expert, never stop and think you've learned it all. Now, 10 years later, I can add, because you haven't. The second point I made that day was, never underestimate the goodwill established by strong working relationships with good people in your field. This is the path of the journey, the sometimes swashbuckling path, your path that is marked by today's accomplishment, the path that will lead to the journey's end. I learned how to take this path by watching my father go out of his way to help others. If it meant the realm of knowledge was advanced, he always put good science and goodwill first, and good fortune came his way. It has worked for me too. Oh, and point 2A came flying in. Building goodwill doesn't guarantee a discovery, but it sure makes the journey more rewarding. I made some other points that day, but let me summarize them as this. As you live out your career, indeed as you live out your life, when you're successful, be humble. When you're unsuccessful, be gracious. I've spoken to my father today, a geologist educated here in the 1950s, myself educated here in the 1970s. We had some of the same professors. He worked on his thesis in St. John's, Arizona with Dr. William Mulberger. And 25 years later, Bill became my thesis advisor and good friend. I took senior level structural geology from Dr. Sharon Mosher, and went on 660 with both of them. Speaking from this nearly 70 years of combined experience from two UT geologists, you have received an invaluable gift here in Austin. It's sure a diploma with your name on it today, but the education and experience you have had with the professors, the researchers, your fellow students, all working towards the same goal. This is the most powerful blessing that you have received. You remember I started my story with, with my education here. Well, you may have caught on that I didn't turn in that thesis. and I didn't get a degree. My swashbuckling arrogance at that time led me to believe that I could prosper in a career based on my accomplishments as an expertly trained geologist with an English degree. I guess at that time in 1980, I could be described by those same great words that describe that swashbuckling star in Top Gun, Tom Cruise's Maverick, always going Mach 2 with his hair on fire. Maybe some of you have a little singe on your scalp. I hope so. You see, for me, the education was enough, more than enough, 
because of its enormous value. Being a geologist is being a swashbuckler, and each of you will be so in your own special way. Indeed, the motto of this university is as swashbuckling as it gets, as swashbuckling is changing the world. Sure, that saying recognizes the most prized and noble at UT, but it also should reside in the heart of every member of the UT family. And when it resides right next to the swashbuckling spirit in the heart of every geologist, then great things have started here. So, you know why I'm so excited to share this moment with you, a graduation ceremony with diplomas in geology. I've never been to one. So it is my great honor to share this moment with you today. There's nothing finer than a Longhorn geologist. Congratulations and hook em.